sheds all up. Now digging the holes for the end stanchions. So one there, one there, two at that end, and then one a bit further that way for the pedestrian door that we've got to put in. And then also we're just going around and marking, just see here, got a bit of chalk. We're bolting some angle iron onto there to sit the concrete panels on top of because we don't want to concrete the floor then sit them on because all the water comes underneath. So we put the concrete panels on then concrete up to them and a little bit higher so the water can't come in. So I made like a little dam around it all so that I can pour all the grout in there now and it doesn't all come flowing out because you have to put it in real sloppy to go down these cones. I put these bits on as well so the concrete walls sit on top of here so that the concrete can run underneath run underneath it and then we'll shutter that side up slightly lower and then run it down so that the water can't come under the panels and up and in so yeah right so this is what i've got for grout in the bolts in high performance masonry re repair grout i mean you can use bags of cement but this stuff goes really hard and don't have any flex in it so the bolts won't move at all so we'll pull this down each one bucket down each uh, each set of cones so mix the grout up and wetted it all up want it real wet and runny so it goes under these bolts and that's it grouted in half oh, gone off so when that's completely gone off it's filled the cones i'll just make sure they're completely tightened down i'll just give this a bit of a clean and that's all the shed ain't gonna move again that's it next load of panels are here there's three arctic load of panels all together so i'm here so the first one's high 1500 so these are big they probably weigh three ton of each and then yeah the 1200s ready to go in these 1500 panels are seriously heavy i'm just turning the steering wheel and all the weight is on the front wheels the back end's completely off the floor and this jcb weighs 11 ton these are the uh, corner panels I've made, so the, those panels going that way will sit on top of there. The nose ones will sit on that one going that way. So these are the lifters that just bolt on here, then you chain them up to the JCB to pick them up, and they pull themselves in. So the first concrete panel, using these big chains to hold it. Up we go. That's in place. Just lower it down. And that's it on. And these little brackets hold them to the back of the stanchions. first row of 1500 panels is in put those end stanchions in i've got to paint them i haven't painted them because i've just got to work out where i'm going to put the uh, cleats on and i've got this stuff this uh, gray gray silicon which goes in this groove here like this so we'll put that along look just put a load of gray silicon all the way down that end like that and then that will seal it stop the water coming through Keep running this along like this and then this tongue groove bit the next one will crush it all in spread it all out stop the water going in so that's the panels in just waiting for the end one end ones now because i had to measure between there and there there and there and there and there to get the right size because the panel makers will cut the panel well make the panels to whatever size you want so i'll wait a couple of weeks for them just a bit e just a bit easier to do it like that these stanchions i was going to put some bolt boxes in and put them in here but i didn't bother i just dug a hole and just dangled them in the hole and leveled them up put a couple of bags of cement around them to hold them then i'm gonna get the concrete lorry to come and just put half a cubic meter around each one to hold it and this one here this stanchion's got ready for this door here that's for the pedestrian door so i welded like a bit of rsj in the bottom that should all get filled with concrete and then the pedestrian door will go in here and then the concrete panels will come up to here so Usually I would have put like some bolt boxes in, but I wasn't sure of any of the sizes or anything because I wanted to get on and get the shed up. I just shoved it in like this, so it won't it won't matter too much. So these bits here, these bits of threaded bar, they're called the sag bars. So I've got this, 
and that basically welds just there like that and these are those bits there that obviously bolt to the top bit of wood to that bit so that when you put the wood in it holds it and stops it from bowing and then another bit there so i'm just making them to put them in so there you are. i can see them look one there one there and then the next one that goes in there'll probably be another one between there and there that's all they're doing is stopping it from bowing so put a couple of bits in at the end as well there is a part one and a part two and this is obviously part three to building this shed so if you want to watch it go and have a look early morning this morning i'm just back filling these with concrete to hold them do that post there then to the back as well got all the rest of these rods in as well that like you can see just waiting for the rest of the concrete walls to come now we're currently putting the end panels in so that one bolts there like usual and then these corner bits have these big steel bars that go in here like that so they sit tight there then you drill these bits there's four of them drill them and then they bolt there and then the usual slats bolt on there like that and the same with the top ones as well so when we've got these in we'll drill them in then put them on then that holds all the uh holds all the corner panels in so this is how they're held in so you look bar bolted in with uh ground anchor bolts four of them and then just put the cleats and they uh, they bolt straight onto that. Easy peasy. This concrete panel here just need a sliver off there like that. Because it's, I don't know if it's come and it's not been formed properly or something, but it's just got a slight bit. So we're just going to disc cut that bit off and then it'll fit perfectly in here. Because at the moment there's, a, there's a, like, it's closed at the bottom and then at the top it's got like a bit of a gap like that. So we want it to sit dead tight up against that wall. the last panel is going in out of all of them so the concrete walls are all in all the wood is in so that's a good job well done and what I've done these bottom bits of wood just here they sit about three inches slightly higher than the concrete walls so that when we come to put like, there's a little bit of tin that goes between there and the wood, stop the grain going over the top. So I sit it slightly higher, so it's angled like that. So that if you do, if a, do, a bit of corn does go on the side there, when you empty the barn, it just runs off. So you ain't got to get up there and sweep it all off. The cladding has all turned up, just here. So it's all cut to size as well. So what I did, most cladding suppliers, if you um, send them the measurements of the shed and the pitches and everything like that, they'll do it, put it, put it into CAD and then they'll just sort of cut all the sheets to size. So hopefully there will be a little bit of cutting at the top, but all these and all around the sides and we won't, and they're in full size sheets as well. So like these bits here, they're in full length sheets. So I ain't got to sort of overlap them and double them up. So, you know, they're a lot stronger and the wind can't get under them as well. These are some of the floor vents as well. So this is to cool the grain. So these go in the middle of the floor and then sort of these, these go on the concrete floor that I've got to lay and these go on top and then these poles, they sort of sit next to them so you don't hit them with a JCB and then they have all ducts running under the floor to the outsides that the fans go on. So I've got a bit of a diagram here. So that's what one will look like on the concrete floor, like that. And if I flip it over the other way, that's the pole next to it like that and that's what it that's what it does there look so just here that's where the pedestal will sit inside then it comes outside under the concrete wall and then it sits there and the fan goes on top of that little pipe there and what it does you can just keep moving the fan onto the next pipe and the next pipe instead of having to get on top of the heap and then move all the uh, fans around on top of the heap because it's quite hard work i'm just putting my mains electric in at the moment and i made like this little thing here and then like the main board will bolt onto there, then any controller you need, it's RCD brake or whatever you want to put on there. Obviously all the wires have got to come back down from here for the um, 
for the uh, roller shutter door and then we've got to have cables coming out of it going all down the side here to the fans uh, lights I've got my LED lights up in the roof they're 250 watt a piece of house they'll be really good this is the cable we're using here quite thick stuff just digging the uh, trench put the cable in doing it about 600 mil deep through all this rock and I'm going to cover the cable in sand so the cable goes up that duct up there and the cable it comes it can't see it but it's hanging the other side of the wall ready to go onto that board and I've sanded it all and put the electrical tape in now it's all ready to fill in, so it goes all the way along here like that, round there into that shed, then it goes. So I ran the cable from there all up, over there, and it comes down. It comes down with these next to the solar panels. I've taken this cover off, and it will come in here like this, with all these other ones. Each one goes to each different shed, you see. And we'll wire it into this main hard board where the mains electric comes in started putting the cladding up these are obviously all full-size sheets and then obviously you can see they get bigger and bigger and bigger as they go up there so this first one here is 200 mil longer 150 mil longer 200 mil longer than the next one's 150 and so on and so on and so on and then obviously what we're going to do we uh, we cut the tops off so it's in line with the roof and then we put the uh, the barge board on top the fi uh, fiber cement barge board to cover it all so we either we'll probably use like a little nibbler to nibble that off like that or i've got like a little cordless circular saw with a metal disc in it just cut them off so that's good i've gone a little bit longer this end as well because this it needs to sort of cover these fans that are going up down here so they've i've gone come like a hundred uh, sorry a few hundred mil just past just past it there like that just try and keep the uh, fans as uh, dry as possible that are obviously going to sit outside so I'll get the rest of this on now. I would start with the sides usually, but unfortunately the ends have come and not the sides. The sides are coming next week, so we're going to put the ends on and then we'll put the sides on. Cutting these off so that all the drips fit above the doors. Just put these temporary screws in to hold it for the time being. So I'll have a drip above this big roller shutter door here. And then another one down here above the pedestrian door, just there. Oh, you dropped it. left a slight little gap just here to give us a little bit of a play down the bottom of the shed in case there's a deviation in the roof otherwise we'll get like little little shark teeth at the bottom of the bloody thing so we've just left that gap so we can move it up and down if we have to but so far all is good that's one side nearly complete we'll take the string line down then so I've used that string line all the way down there to uh, get them all level, so they should be looking pretty level. Because you don't, what you don't want is to obviously sit one past it, and then it goes along and sort of dips out, and it don't look great. So yeah, that side done. Do the other side, and do the gable ends. There we are. One side up, all looking good. We'll start. We'll probably do this end now. Probably just work our way round, all like round like that. And then that end, we'll have to start where we've where we've left off and carry on that way. We'll just cut in that sheet there, just to do this little bit at the end here. And we do it using using a nibbler. You don't want to use an angle grinder, or else all the sheets will go rusty. So you use a nibbler, and it, uh, the sheets won't go rusty. Getting the gable sheets ready to go on this end. There's the roof. See it from up above. It's all looking good. So there's shed number four. This is grain shed number four. 
Uh, this one here with the solar panels on is number one. That one over there is number two. That's number three. Cattle shed, ram bale straw shed, machinery store, square bale shed. Uh, another shed there, and there's another cattle shed across the road there. So we're just putting the gable end on. Put a little sign up. Then we've nibbled the tops of this one off here like this and then this barge board here sits on top like this to cover it so we have to screw this here and then on top there like that so that covers it all up we'll probably just trim this end up as well make it nice and nice and square so that's the barge boards and then we're just sitting the sheets on top of this drip here and then just cutting the tops off carry on with that in a minute and then there'll be some corner flashing that goes down here and then this bit here where the pedestrian doors going when we finish sheeting we'll we'll put some wood in here like that and then screw there's the door just there so we'll screw the pedestrian door in just here and then we can set the height so we can probably just cut a bit off there like that and put the drip in and then it'll all sit nice and tight and nice and neat so these corner flashings just here they go on here, like that, and pull it all together to finish it all off nice and neatly. So we've got them on, obviously one on each corner and then one down each side of the door. These are the offcuts from the top. As you can see, very, very minimal wastage, because this stuff's quite expensive. So, that's good. That'll end up going in the scrap bin. Get rid of that. So there we have end of part three of building the shed. Do a part four. The part four will be putting these uh, grain ducts in, digging it all up, concreting all the floor, putting the roller shutter door in, and um, putting the uh, you know connecting the mains electric up. And then after that, I think it's pretty much pretty much there to be honest. And remember, don't forget to subscribe to the Tom Lamb YouTube channel. Very very interesting.